guys, this is Christopher Carrington with gmustudent.com and today what we are going to work on is how to insert information into our database. But before we get to that, let's just look at what we did in the previous tutorial. So let me uh, minimize everything so that you can fully see it. So we imported all of the information that we needed. Um, we imported two exceptions. So here are the two exceptions that we used. And then we imported connection, statement, and driver manager. And we utilized that in connection, statement, and driver manager. We um, First we got our JDBC driver, then we established our connection, then we established our statement, then we wrote our statement, and then we asked it to execute our statement. So I hope everyone's following along because we're gonna keep rolling on through. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to insert information into our database. But before I do that, I want you guys to think a little bit. What we did before is we created a table. And after we created that table, um, what we had Java do was uh, it just executed that table and then it put it into um, SQL. What do you think would happen if we ran this program again? So if we, if we actually clicked the run button and told Java, hey, I want you to create another table called books, do you think it would overwrite that table called books? Do you think it would make a books too? What do you think would happen? Well, actually, if we run it, one of our catch blocks will be caught. It's our SQL exception. And it will say the error, error, table, books already exists. This is the whole reason why we did those catches, so that any time we have a problem, it will tell us what that problem is in the console. This will make debugging so much easier if you actually catch all those exceptions that you're throwing and then print them out to the console, because if you see, hey, I keep clicking on, uh, I keep clicking the run button and it's not going in. Well, if you look in the console, it'll tell you why. That's why it's really good to make your own of these and not use frameworks because then you'll know exactly how everything is running. So I just wanted to point that example out to you just so that you can realize, hey, why on earth did we actually write these catches here? But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool, but let's move forward. So now what we want to do is in SQL, I'd like us to insert information into our books table. So all you do is you click books, and then you come to SQL, and then in here, let's write our insert. So write insert into, and then write books, and give me an open and close paren, and then write values, and an open and close paren. Honestly, guys, the only way you are going to get used to this syntax is if you write it over and over and over again. I know it's a little weird, but if you really think about it in plain English, it just sounds like plain English. It makes sense, but you're just going to have to write it over and over and over again, or you can just look up W3Schools every single time you want to do something. It gets pretty annoying after a while, but let's get back on track. So in the first paren, what you're going to want to put are all of the columns that you would like to insert something into. Take a look at that. All of the columns for the books table. So that's going to make this part pretty easy. And then the values, you put in the actual values you want to put for each column, and they have to line up. So let's do that. In books, let's type in ID, name, author, and publisher. And then in here, you will type in the value you want for ID, the value you want for name, author, and publisher. So that would just be like this. And remember, never put a comma at the end because an SQL will expect you have something else. Now, before we keep going, I want you to think about something for a second. If you think about when we created this database, we said that we wanted the ID field to be auto increment. So what that means is if we don't specify an ID, then SQL will know hey, the last ID was seven, so we know this ID is going to be eight. Or if you, have no, if you have no books in there now, the first one is going to be one. So instead of having to think about, okay, this one's gonna be four, and the next time it's gonna be five, and the next time it's gonna be six, all we have to do is not include it. All you have to put in your insert is the columns you wanna insert things into. So don't get in the habit of thinking, oh, I have to insert something into all of them every single time. No, you only have to insert things in the columns that you desire to insert them into. So since this is the first book, theoretically, it should be a one. 
So let's type in a book name. So let's type in Harry Potter. And let's type in J.K. Rowling. Sorry if I misspell it. And let's say the publisher of it is Apple Corporation. Who knows what it is? Not the point. Okay, so after we've written this, let's highlight everything. Hopefully it works. And let's click go. And since nothing is happening, that means it worked. So let's type in select star from books. And this means show me all of the columns from books. Go. And you will see ID 3 name Harry Potter author JK Rowling publisher Apple Corporation you guys should definitely have an idea of one I'm pretty sure what happened was before I did this tutorial I did two of them um, on my own just to make sure that it was working correctly and then I deleted them but it's still seeing them so it started at three so don't worry about that you guys should definitely have an idea of one but you get the general gist of what I'm trying to show you so since we copied that insert let's go into Java and now we remembered, let's look at what we have so far. So we have we have our driver established, we have our connection established, and then we have our statement established. Do we want to execute this statement again? No, we went through that before. So we can either delete it or we can comment it. Let's just comment it for now. But we said every time we want to write a statement, we have to say statement is assigned connection.create statement. And since we do want to do an insert statement, we still need that line. So that line's fine and it stays. Then we need to execute this new statement. So you just write statement, statement, I think I spelled that wrong, but anyway, dot execute. And then you put in the SQL string of what you want to do. So let's just put that string in there and now we have we want to execute a statement that inserts books into the books table insert name author and publisher the values Harry Potter so let's type in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows I think that's what it was called somebody's gonna laugh if that's wrong and then we'll keep that uh, everything else the same and then after this let's do a print line that says that it worked so system dot out dot print ln statement inserted oh let's say book book inserted so this will give us a little bit of feedback in the console and tell us if it worked so let's show our console and let's run this book inserted so let's go to MySQL click go and now we see on four Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows JK Rowling Apple Corporation so again going back to our little diagram you can see full well now we can make SQL commands in project we can make SQL commands in the database and they manipulate our tables and the reason we can do this in both is because we made a connection within our project to the database. Really sweet stuff. So I hope this tutorial made perfect sense to everybody watching it. And thank you so much for following through. Stay tuned for the next tutorial because we're going to be learning some more.